So now we're going to discuss the graph of a 30 degree cut. Cut induced throw is always involved in a 30 degree cut, but we are also going to now add spin to the equation. Now this is a graph of the 30 degree cut. Again, this is throw from one, two, three, four, five degrees of throw to negative degrees of throw. This is from the amount of English from negative English, zero, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. This would be inside English on that 30 degree cut we were looking at. And this is outside English, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So 50% 50 outside English at 100% topspin would be 50% outside English at 100% topspin. You'll notice on the graph, the same values are here that were discussed in cut-induced throw. So these values were around 0.2 for fast, 0.6 for medium and 1.5 for slow. That's the same values on this chart that we originally drew up, which is 0.2 for fast, 0.6 for medium, and 1.5 for slow. So this is your straight cut induced throw line as if you were hitting the cue ball along the center at 100% topspin. Say you were hitting this spot with 50% inside English. Then your throw would be a half a degree for fast, three quarters of a degree for medium, and 2.2 degrees of throw for the slow shot. Red being slow, blue being medium speed, green being fast speed. This is gearing English for a 30 degree cut. This is 40% outside English. So this is 25% outside English. This is 50% outside English. So 40% outside English is about anywhere along this line. But in this graph, this is the spot. This is 100% topspin, 40% outside English. At this spot, there is no throw. You can aim directly at the pocket. The ball will go directly to the pocket. The ball, the object ball will also tend to roll end over end with no side spin. If you go greater than gearing English, then the throw, so if you're putting right spin on that ball, you will have to aim a bit more to the right with 80% outside English for fast. You'll have to aim here for medium and you'll have to have almost one and a half degrees to the same side of the spin. Gearing English is the critical thing to understand in pool. Any shot under gearing English you aim to overcut the ball. Any shot greater than gearing English, you aim to the same, you compensate by aiming to the same side as a spin. And any time you put gearing English, you're aiming straight at the pocket. If we look at 50% topspin, the graph looks a little bit different. Now we're shooting along this would be 25%, this is the 50% line. The Q anywhere along this line is what this graph is. Again, at gearing English, you're aiming straight at the pocket. But at a center ball hit, again, we have the same numbers that were on the chart for 50% vertical spin. Fast being 0.5 degrees of throw medium being 1.6 and slow being 3.2. So that's showing up on our chart of 50% vertical spin at 
1.5 degrees of throw for fast, 1.6 for medium, 3.2 degrees for slow. This would occur if you are at 50% top spin or 50% draw and close to the ball. If you are at 50% inside spin, then you would have to overcut the ball by 3.3 degrees for slow, 1.2 degrees for medium, and half a degree for fast. Any time again that you put more than gearing English on the ball, you will have to aim to the same side. So if you put 60% outside English on the 30 degree cut to the left, you would be negative 2.2 degrees of throw. You'd aim fat 2.2 degrees for slow. You'd aim fat 1.3 degrees for medium and 0.3 degrees for fast. So this would be 2550. This would be aiming about in this line, either top spin or bottom spin, you would have to aim along. You would use this, these values to compensate your aim. So say we were going to shoot stun shots anywhere along this line with English right and left. If we change this for a stun shot at 30 degrees, we end up with this graph. So again, with 40% outside English and stun, you would aim straight at the pocket. So here you would aim straight at the pocket. If we go back to the stun at center ball hit, which would be here, Again, you would go back to the chart, and the chart for 0% side spin that we had showed for stun at 30 degrees was about 1.1 for fast, 3.2 for medium, and 4.8 for slow. So that shows up on this chart at 30 degrees, be 1.1 degrees of throw for fast, 3.2 for medium, 4.8 for slow. So say you hit this 30 degree cut to the left with 50% inside English. 50% English, this is the 25%, this is 50% inside English. We are now in stun. So 50% inside English would be here on the cue ball. If you hit it there on the cue ball, you would have to overcut the ball by half a degree for fast, one and a half degrees for medium, almost four degrees for slow. If you played with gearing English, which would be here, you would aim straight to the pocket. Anything over gearing English, you'd have to have more compensation. So for slow, medium, and fast, with 60% outside spin, you would have to aim all three shots at 2.2 degrees fat of your intended direction of the cue ball. So an understanding of these graphs and practicing shooting these graphs will give you a better idea of how to play pool but you'll finally come to the conclusion that hitting gearing English is a great way to play pool because you don't have to compensate whether you're in stun or whether you are in 50% roll, which is here or minus here. So with outside English, you'd be hitting here and here. You could aim straight at the pocket 100% topspin, again, you could aim straight at the pocket from here or here. Gearing English takes all the guesswork out of playing pool. If you know how to shoot gearing English accurately, you can aim everything at the pocket. 
simplifies your life. Anything less than gearing English, including forward roll, you overcut the ball. Anything over gearing English, you aim fat, you aim to the same side as the spin. So for a center line hit on a 30 degree shot, it looks like this, whether you're at 100% topspin, stun, or 50% topspin, plus and minus, you're always getting cut-induced throw. So this is about the spot you want to aim for gearing English, either top, equator, or draw. This is looking at it from above. This is about the spot you want to aim for. To calculate for gearing English, you take the line that the ball is intended to go on and you bring it over to the cue ball and it creates two points and you want to contact this ball 40 percent of the distance between these two points so you want to contact the cue ball here you'll find that you're usually aiming about 50 percent of the distance visibly between these two spots so there's the 40% contact point. Visibly, you're probably looking at 50% of the distance from there to there to have 40% contact. That will give you gearing English. So we're gonna talk about different angles of cut and the fact that they give you different percentages of spin for gearing English. So right now there's no side spin, so there's no gearing English. We're right up through the center on the zero. Right. If we give it a 15 degree cut angle, you notice Gary English now moves off a zero. It's moved right there. So a 15 degree cut angle requires about 20% side spin to give you Gary English, which allows you to aim through the center of the, the pocket. So it would be roughly just shy of this 25% line for 20%. That would be Gary English for a 15 degree cut. And it doesn't matter if it's 100% topspin, 50% topspin, it's still, still 20%. No topspin on the equator at zero topspin, it's still 20%. Now we increase our angle of shot to 30 degrees. Garen English has now moved. It's now roughly around 40%. And if I put top spin on it, let's say 50% top spin, again, it still hasn't moved. So for a 30 degree cut, you need about 40% side spin, 25, 50 on that blue line, a little less than that for 40%. In order to shoot gear in English and be able to aim the center of the pocket, you need 40% side spin for a 30 degree cut. You need a 20% for a 15 degree cut. Now let's try a 45 degree cut. And again, you see the side spin or the gear in English has moved again, this time to a little more than 55% spin. So we got 25, we got 50, and we got 75. So a little more than 50 is going to be the Garen English for a 45 degree angle of cut. And now we'll just go with 60 degree angle of cut. Enter. And the Garen English has moved again to a little more than 70%. Actually, just shy of 70%. So 25%, 50%, 75%. So just shy of 75% over here is Garen English for a 60 degree cut. So Garen English for different angles of cut require different amount of spin. Understanding English in billiards, the key to accurate aiming. Mastering English is crucial in billiards. When aiming directly at a pocket, applying exactly the right amount of gear in English ensures the object ball rolls straight in. Less than gear in English, the object ball will be dragged along with the cue ball, causing it to go long and miss the pocket. To compensate, aim short of the pocket. This applies to all rolling cue balls, as they inherently have less than gear in English. More than gear in English. The object ball will be pulled toward you due to the excessive spin. To compensate, aim to the same side of the spin you applied. This is the only situation where throw becomes negative. Understanding throw. 
Cut and loose throw is a constant for a specific shot. Garen English perfectly counteracts this throw, making the ball travel straight. Less than Garen English results in cut and deuce throw, pushing the shot forward requiring a short aim. More than Garen English causes a spin and deuce throw to be more of a factor and pulls the shot towards you, requiring a short aim. In simpler terms, aiming directly at the pocket works only with Garen English. Less English needs a short aim to compensate for the long drag. More English needs a long aim to counter the pull towards you. By understanding these concepts, you can master English and become a more precise billiards player.